Metaverse updates now. FTC is produced in partnership with PTC. On Friday, May 29th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, come check out the incredible submissions for the Robots to the Rescue Challenge at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. PTC will be providing giveaways for both submitted robots and for those who watch live. Don't forget that you can register for Onshape for free and start designing right in your browser at onshape.com forward slash education dash plan. All right, caller number four, one, two, three, coming up from the bottom. That's going to be Jose uh, is coming in uh, for a chance to win trivia. Jose, are you willing to play some trivia? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, uh, Sean, I'm taking it away. Awesome. So, Sanford, we're going to ask you to take off your headset. That way you can't hear the questions. We're going to go through each of the five questions, uh, Jose. Uh, you can either say the answer or you can just say pass. And, Sanford, once we're done asking Jose the questions, we'll wave at you uh, for you to join back. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, everybody ready? Awesome. So what was the name of the cube-shaped scoring element in Relic Recovery? Jose, are you there? Yeah. What was the name of the cube-shaped scoring element in Relic Recovery? Uh, the gold mineral. OK. Uh, in Velocity Vortex, teams receive five points for being partially parked on the vortex. And at the end of Autonomous, how many points did they receive for being fully parked? Uh, 15. What was the game that, what was the last game where teams used the Samantha control system? I say that again? What was the last game where teams used the Samantha control system? Uh, I'm gonna say Velocity Vortex. How many different scoring zones were there in Rescue? Rescue, uh, four. Which was the first game where live scoring was officially supported by the FTC scoring system and it was commonly used at all levels of competition? Oh, these are all really hard. Uh, hey, uh, yeah, that's true. Um, I'm gonna say Relic Recovery. Awesome. And that's gonna wrap it up. Sanford, if you can see us, please get on. There he goes. I think he saw us. Awesome. Sanford, we're not going to ask you the five questions. Um, you can either answer them or say pass, and we'll come back to them at the end. You ready? Yep. Awesome. What was the name of the cube-shaped scoring element in Relic Recovery? Uh, unobtainium? In Velocity Vortex, teams receive five points for being partially parked on a vortex at the end of Autonomous. How many points do they receive for being fully parked? At the Wait, what game? In Velocity Vortex. Or, uh, oh, parking on the center? 15? Parking on a vortex. 15. Okay. Uh, what game was the last game where teams used the Samantha control system? Uh. Uh. Cascade effect. Okay. How many different scoring zones were there on the rescue mountain? Three? Which was the first game where live scoring was officially scored, uh, supported by the FTC scoring system and it was commonly used at all levels of competition? Okay, great. That's going to wrap it up. Let's go over the answers. So the first question was, what was the name of the cube-shaped scoring element in Relic Recovery? And if you remember that game, there was this huge pit 
filled with all these cubes, and that pit was called the Glyph Pit, and all those cubes were each called glyphs. So Sanford said unobtainium, and our guest uh, Jose said gold mineral, so neither of you get a point for that one. The next question was, in Velocity Vortex, teams receive five points for being partially parked on a vortex at the end of Autonomous. How many points do they receive for being fully parked? The correct answer was 10. Both of you had said 15. What was the game, what was the um, last game where teams used the Samantha control system? And that was actually Cascade Effect, which is what Sanford had said. It was not Velocity Vortex, as Jose had said. How many different scoring zones were they on the Rescue Mountain? And if you remember the Rescue Mountain, there were four different places where teams could go. There was the low zone, there was the mid zone, there was the high zone, and then the zone that was at the very top where the hanging bar was, was the cliff zone. So there were four different zones. Sanford got that one wrong, but our guest got it right. Um, and so we are tied at one point apiece. This last question could be the tiebreaker, and it is, which was the first game where live scoring was officially supported by the FTC scoring system, and it was commonly used at all levels of competition? And the correct answer to that was Rover Ruckus. Uh, Sanford said Rover Ruckus, and our guest said Relic Recovery. In Relic Recovery, it was used at a couple of uh, North Carolina events and at Ford Field Finals, but it was not used commonly, and it was not a part of the FTC scoring system. So congratulations, Sanford. You made our bank go up by $10, so the next time we have a trivia on First Updates Now, it will be $50. Uh, sorry, Jose. Better luck next time. Uh, we hope you'll still continue to watch. First Updates Now FTC is produced in partnership with PTC. Don't forget that you can register for Onshape for free and start designing right in your browser at onshape.com forward slash education dash plan. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live and independent.